All right, we're here with uh, Joe Lowry from Long Beach originally and now from Ontario. Joe, can you tell us about your uh, youth? Yeah, absolutely. So I was born and raised in Long Beach, California, like Stephen was saying. I was a uh, one of four kids. Grew up in a challenged family. Parents had many fights and eventually split up, forcing us, my mom and siblings, to move out due to my dad's alcoholism. But I loved my dad, very loyal to him, as he would take me to work with him, as he was a self-employed contractor and woodworker. I'd be by his side at a job at job sites as his gopher, grabbing items he needed to complete a task, and I'd also watch as he did his work to learn many more useful skills I could utilize later in life, which I ended up discovering when I had a home. I was able to build a fence and everything, okay. and that was from watching my dad as a child. Got it. And, you know, these things are beautiful gifts that yeah. you don't realize when you're a kid. You're learning and you're just watching yeah. and growing. David, what'd you put them at? Um, the base pressure is around between 15 and 20. And we're gonna start group light. And this is a pretty high base pressure for Joe, but we've already done some cuts and legs training. So I'm ready to go straight to his max base pressure. So it's on, it's on relatively or moderately tight, I'd say. But even so, we're gonna start with the lower pressures of the optimal pressure and only progressively work our way up. Oh, there we go. And Joe's already starting the flexion exercises with his hand. And of course, we can see already just this brilliant color coming in. And then you were at uh, Long Beach Wilson. That's correct. And then 9-11 uh, hit. Uh, yeah, I think I was in 10th or 11th grade when it happened, uh -huh. and that was like, hey, was, I grew up in a, like I said, in yeah. a poor family, so I wasn't going to college, didn't have the grades for it, I was a C student, C's get degrees <laughs> type student, so it was like, the recruiters came by, and I was like, he asked me, hey, you know what, I had just seen the movie, uh, no, what the hell, was the Ranger movie, um, who Black the actor? Down. okay. And I, so I was all pumped. I was like, I want to be a ranger. I go in and tell the recruiter that he tests me. They do the ASVAB test, and I get this really high score. He's like, you sure? You Wait a second. So you said you were a C student, but yeah. you got a, a oh, high. Oh, I got a real high score on the ASVAB. And he's okay. like, you sure you want to be? This guy was a truck driver. He's like, you sure you want to be an infantry man, 11 Bravo? And I was like, yeah, that's what rangers are, right? Yeah. And he's like, okay. Yeah. And had we trained his upper body, we would be warming him down by cycling his legs. So I always uh, warm down the opposite of what I trained. How's it feel, Joe? Like I said, my legs right now are just tripping. Yeah, he, that, was, that was a pretty serious workout, lower body. Now, in 11 Bravo for that's those infantrymen. Of, okay. That's All just right. the code that they yeah. use. So you're a 10th, 11th grade, and now 9 11 hits, you got a recruiter on campus, and then what was it, what was next? So How'd I, you... I, would, I, I stepped in, as they call it, the late entry program. Okay. So basically, you have a basic training date post your graduation from high school. Got it. And you have like a certain the contract is dependent on your uh, graduation. Fulfillment of, okay. Yeah. And, so it was like I knew I was going to the army as soon as I got out of high school. So I kind of, with the uh, struggles, I ended up leaving high school early, and because I was eighteen already, uh, my okay. senior year. So I ended up going to um, take like a 
I forget what the heck they call it, but it was like classes outside of high school okay. so I could work. Cause I, it was okay. A, GED? I, yeah, it was a GED okay. program. Okay. Hey, I'm Joe Lowry. I use Katsu um, every morning while I walk, and my walking is still very um, challenging for me. It requires uh, assistance from somebody there as what they call in therapy, contact guard precautions, and I'll strap the bands on my legs and walk around with it, run a cycle, and then I use it again in the evenings for a cool down just passively as I'm reading and going through my um, my evening cool down routines mm -hmm. to prepare for sleep. Can we try this motion while looking straight? Good. Keeping that head straight. Good, good. Excellent. Perfect. Look at that. Look at that posture. Excellent. I was like, that suffices to get in the military still. Yeah. So I was like, I'm done with the high school games. And because I had to work and you know, yeah. help the family out. I was working at Target at the time in Long Beach. Okay. And so do you get your deployment paper? It's signed, it's sealed, it's delivered. Where do you go from that point? Well, parents have to sign off. Yeah, yeah. Well, Sarah, so, I mean, from, from Long Beach, you get on a plane to LAX to where? You know, LAX to Fort Benning, Georgia. Because it okay. depends on your what job you right. pick like for me so right. 11 bravos all train at the yeah, infantry train at fort okay. benning georgia all right so i was headed to georgia which is a huge base culture different yeah, yeah. Base, base and, <laughs> and culture different so i was yeah. like i get there and i have a great story about the kind yeah. of highlights that good i'm gonna give you something to hold on with this Try to open that up. Good. That yeah, don't work for me when I want you to work. So I'm in the chow hall line, the uh -huh, cafeteria, right. and the black lady goes to me. She's like, what do you want? And I'm like, I'll get some of that cream of wheat over there. She's like, these is grits, son. And I'm like, oh damn, where the hell am I? <laughs> And how were grits? It was the first time you oh, had yeah, grits. Yeah, it was awesome. But yeah. I mean, I, I'm thinking cream of wheat, right. California boy. Yeah. She's yeah. like, no, this is grits, son. I'm like, oh, damn. Do you want help with that? Good. Good. Relaxing thoughts. I've noticed specifically the nights when I don't have time to put it on. I don't sleep as well, so right. I'm like, that's a huge deal. Right. Yeah. But I mean, that's how I, and then, oh, and then in the morning, I also use it on my arms after I'm done training the legs, doing walking with it all, because my left arm is what they call involved or affected. So I have flexor tone in it, meaning my hand clenches down like that, and I'll have it on my left arm and right arm, and I'll just do, I have this unit called a, uh, Sabo flex, which opens my hand up mechanically, and then I'll grasp and release exercise and I'm in front of my bed with the katsu cycle on. I'll run a cycle. And now I just want to bring it up. Good. Perfect. So it's like juggling all these tests. Can we keep the posture while we crush that bicep? Flex the pec. Oh, look at those pecs. Yes. Good. I like to train 
Joe to look forward as he walks. And we will sometimes choose to target outdoors to see if we can focus on what's outside rather than what's in the room. Try to make navigating the room second nature. Good. Yup. And my caregivers have specifically told me, and I've noticed this too, like with the legs, I have a tone, a non-volitional tone because of the injury to my brain. And I'm like, I notice that it decreases it quite a bit or it's more functional because my caregiver's like, oh, your hand is a lot less tight tonight. Mm. Did you train this morning? I was like, no, actually I didn't. That's oh. interesting. Uh. Keeping that gaze forward, exactly. David, why is that important? Well, Dr. Sato always emphasizes that when we're training in Katsu, we want the whole body to be aligned. Um, he emphasizes that the eyes should be facing the direction that the activity actually requires. And right before we did this, we did four to five Katsu cycles. So this is the culmination of Katsu cycles. 